Well, good morning, everyone. So glad to be with you today, and I'm so glad that it's Children's Sunday today. All right, kids, raise your hands. Where are you? All right, there you are, all over in the room. And kids, we want you to know we love you, and we are so glad that you are part of our church family. And we want to thank you for leading us today and helping us experience the presence of Jesus. I also want to thank all of our uh, volunteers who pour into our kids week in and week out. And I can tell you uh, as a pastor, that makes me so excited that this is a part of our church family, that we have all of these generations together in one place. Where else in the world can you do that except for the church? And as a mom, uh, having four kids here in the children's ministry, I can tell you, Wow, what an incredible gift that you love our kids so well. If you are a volunteer in our children's ministry, would you stand all ages of uh, nursery all the way up? Come on, stand up for us. We want to thank you today for what you do. Well, today for this Children's Sunday, we're going to walk through a scripture together, and we're going to look at this story that may be very familiar to you, and we're actually going to read it and encounter the story three different times in three different ways. And I want to invite you, even if you say, oh yeah, I've heard this story before, I want to invite you to pause, to lean in, and dare to believe that our Creator has a word for us today. And that there's something that he wants us to know today from his holy word. Well, kids, how many of you have have ever had a moment where you've had to wake up your mom or your dad in the middle of the night because you needed something? Kids, have you ever had to do that? Okay, most of you, yes. This happens in our house too. And, And I want you to know a little something about the Taylor family. The Taylor kids have learned that when that situation arises, the best person to wake up in the middle of the night is dad, right, guys? Yeah, dad is the better one to wake up because it just goes a little bit better when they decide uh, to wake up uh, dad. Because, you know, the thing is that that when we get, uh, when we're woken up in the middle of the night from the dead of sleep, people wake up in different kinds of ways, you know? There are some of you who are very normal about it. There's really nothing notable or exciting. You just wake up and there it is. But then there are some of us that it's just a little more exciting in how we wake up, right? Uh, You know, there are the won't waker uppers. Have you ever seen one of those? You know, where you can be nudging them, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up, and they just won't wake up. I have a theory that, that some adults develop this skill during this stage when they have a newborn at home, that that they learn to not hear anything and not wake up in the middle of the night. There are others who are kind of the jump out of betters. They hear something and they're ready to go as if it's the starter's pistol at the beginning of a race. They're out of bed knocking stuff over, ready to go. What do we need to do? Then uh, one of my favorites, I have some siblings like this, that are sleep talkers. Anyone in here sleep talkers? You can wake someone up and you think you're talking with them, they're talking back to you, and they're not actually awake. So you've learned this is a good YouTube moment as well to get a little bit of, uh, little bit of footage there. And then there's another category, and this is the category that I fall into. So you're sleeping in the middle of the night and someone wakes you up and <gasps> this is what I do. It doesn't matter how calm or gentle our kids are. <gasps> I still gasp. I'm the terrified gasper. This is how I wake up in the middle of the night. And our poor children have learned that uh, if they were scared to begin with, it's even more scary to wake up mom uh, in a moment like that. So our kids have learned to go to dad in the middle of the night. It goes better that way. Well, today we're going to look at a story in the scripture where Jesus is asleep and the disciples need to wake him up because they are afraid. Uh, You may know this story well. Uh, We find it in three of the Gospels, and we're going to look at it today from Mark chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, and it's on the screen as well, Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. It says, That day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, 
Let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This story in the scripture tells us of this moment when Jesus is in a boat on the Sea of Galilee with his disciples. And if we look at the geography of that place in the world, the same thing that happened then when Jesus walked the earth is the same thing that can happen now. But because of the elevations and the way that storms roll in, that 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 sea can be a very peaceful and serene place. And then without warning, a huge violent storm can erupt right there on that lake. It's, It's prone to that happening there at the Sea of Galilee. So we can imagine that that as things start out that day, they think it's a beautiful day for a boat ride. And they all climb in and it's serene and calm and they begin to make their way across the lake. And we can imagine as, as the scripture describes, Jesus was in the midst of ministry that was intense and he was exhausted. And so he, cal- he, he climbed into that boat and the and the waves were so calm and the pull of the oars and the rhythm of that was so beautiful and it just lulled him right to sleep and I'm thinking Jesus must have been one of those won't wake upper type of guys (laughs) because the storm starts raging the water starts getting rougher and then the boat starts rocking and then it starts to get very very serious and Jesus is still asleep through all of that. Now, how many of you have ever had that experience? Maybe you're at, at work one morning and, and somebody says to you, man, did you wake up with that thunderstorm last night? And you say, no, I had no idea. Have you ever had a moment like that? Yeah, a few times? Where you think, man, I must have been really exhausted. I didn't even hear that storm that seemed to keep someone else up all night. You know, it was, uh, it was a couple weeks ago that my, my parents took this huge trip out west, and they went to go see some national parks. They were traveling with some, uh, some of their family members, and uh, my mom has three older brothers, and uh, one of her brothers thought that it would be a really great surprise to, to arrange for a whole bunch of the extended family, 21 of them, in fact, to come together for a surprise boat trip down the Snake River. They were very excited about this. Now, uh, my parents were excited too, but my mom wasn't quite as excited when she learned that even though they were going to be in a powered uh, motorboat, uh, that they would be going through not one, but two uh, five or level five rapids there uh, in a place called Hell's Canyon. (laughs) How many of you think that sounds like a lot of fun? All right, and then there are the others of us, right? So uh, there were 21 uh, extended family members in this boat together, and uh, I heard, uh, especially in the spring with the way the, uh, the water was raging, it was an unbelievable, unforgettable, and terrifying trip. Uh, My dad said that my mom had a death grip on his hand. Uh, His fingers were turning blue as they tried to uh, go through these rapids together. So uh, here's a little visual for you of what this was like. Let's take a look. Yeah, some of you are thinking, sign me up, and others, not so much. So uh, I've been on the phone with them, and they've been telling me some stories about their adventure, but 
uh, I've heard that the thing that stunned them the most about that whole trip and, you know, some of these moments that absolutely took their breath away and really terrified them was that when they got to the end of the trip, they discovered that the two youngest members uh, there in the family group, Lena, who's seven, and Clayton, who's four, were sleeping through the whole thing. <laughs> I, I don't even know how that's possible. As my dad was telling me about this, and, and, and I'm looking at this story in the scripture, and I think, I don't know what it was like on the Sea of Galilee that day, but you know, we know that the disciples, they were not inexperienced. These were fishermen. These were experienced seamen. And they began fearing for their lives. It says the, water started t- or the boat started taking in water. This was an extremely serious and dangerous moment. And Jesus was sleeping through all of that. I can imagine that, that they were there in the boat and they would look over at Jesus and, and you know, the boat would rock and dip and they think, oh, that one, that surely would have woken him up. But he kept on sleeping. And I think as they kept looking at him, I, I wonder if for those disciples that, that they found themselves not just surprised that a person could sleep through all of that, but I wonder if they began to be deeply disturbed because it was Jesus who was asleep. See, Jesus, he's the leader. He's the Messiah. He's their captain. He's the God of the universe. And there they were in the middle of a storm, and it looked like God was asleep. Can you imagine the kind of terror and confusion in a moment like that, that Jesus would be asleep? Today, we want to imagine what that would have been like. In our third and fourth grade class, they're going to start heading up uh, right now. Uh, They have a little skit for us today to help us imagine what it would have been like to be in the boat that day on the Sea of Galilee. And so as they get ready, I want to encourage you, use your imagination and put yourself in the boat and imagine what it would have been like. One day, Jesus was teaching. He was by the Sea of Galilee. So many people. There's no room for us. I'll have to teach from a boat on the water. Later. Jesus has been teaching all day. He must be tired. Jesus was tired. He told his disciples, Let's go to the other side of the lake. They sailed away. Jesus fell asleep in the back of the boat. Suddenly. Oh no, a storm will sink for sure. We're going to die. Let's get Jesus to do something. Or don't you care we're going to drown? Jesus got up, rebuking the wind and the waves, and said, Quiet, be still. It's quiet. What happened? Jesus stopped the storm. Why are you so afraid? Don't you believe in me yet? Who is this? this? Even Even the the winds and the waves obey him. Thank you, third and fourth graders. Thanks for leading us today. And even sound effects, that was really awesome. (laughs) You know, we can imagine as the disciples got into the boat with Jesus that day, wouldn't you think that it would sound like a great thing to have Jesus in your boat? Wouldn't you think that 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 would sort of give you this guarantee, this sort of safety? This is going to be a good ride across the lake because Jesus, the Messiah, is in the boat with us. But sure enough, Jesus went to sleep. And then just like that, while Jesus was sleeping, everything started spinning out of control And that shouldn't happen after all. Jesus is the captain of the storm. I think these disciples, they would know the sacred scripture well. And I wonder if echoing in their minds, they found the words of Psalm 121. 
I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. (laughs) Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Did you hear those words? He who watches over you will not slumber. That's the promise in Psalm 121. But there they were in the middle of a storm, a moment when they needed Jesus to be watching over them, and Jesus was fast asleep. You know, in many ways, of course, our own lives can feel just like this story. We can find ourselves going through life when things seem serene and peaceful and calm. And then in a split second, without a scene it coming, a violent storm can erupt. And it, it, leaves, it leaves us with our heads spinning and feeling completely overwhelmed by what we're facing. And we too have those moments in our lives where we wonder where God is. When it feels like God has checked out and he's taking a nap. And he has no idea the storm that's raging all around us. We could relate to those disciples who look at Jesus and say, how can you sleep through this? The scripture tells us that they went to wake Jesus up. They said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Teacher, do you not care that we are about to die? Teacher, is it nothing to you that we are going down? (laughs) And remember, as this story began, whose idea was it to cross the lake? Did you catch that detail? Jesus' idea. It was his idea. So all the more so they would think, this was your idea, and now we're about to die right here on the lake. And so they woke Jesus up. But do you know what? Jesus didn't wake up like a terrified gasper. (laughs) He didn't wake up like that. Do you know, when Jesus woke up in the middle of the storm, he was not surprised. He was not unaware of what was going on, and he was not overwhelmed. Very calmly, the creator of the universe stood and spoke, peace be still. And the stunned disciples Witness the authority of this man who could command even the wind and the waves. And it says, and there was at once a great calm, a a perfect peacefulness. And I think right there in that moment, the disciples must have seen it. Peace. Peace. But peace was not the waves and not the water that was stilled. Peace was a person, and his name is Jesus. You see, the disciples had taken a look at Jesus. They're sleeping in the boat, and they thought that he was disengaged. But what if they misread the moment that Jesus was not disengaged? Jesus was at peace. Because you see, the only way that that a person can sleep, can actually rest in the middle of a storm, is if there is peace, if there is a sense of provision, that Jesus, as the Son of God, had a sense of peace in the provision and the care of the Almighty Father God. See, right there, even in the middle of the storm as it raged, peace was right there in the boat with them. And his name was Jesus. But they didn't see that. They didn't see that until Jesus stood and he spoke peace upon the waters. Jesus talked with his disciples other times about peace. In fact, Jesus said to them in the Gospel of 
uh, John, we find these words, John 14, 27. Jesus said, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You see, this beautiful story in the scripture reminds us that even in the middle of a raging storm, we can have peace. Not because of our circumstances but because the one who is peace himself, Jesus, is with us. In Ephesians 2.14, it says, For he himself is our peace. What a beautiful promise that is for us. And today, maybe that's what you most need to hear and to be reminded of, that no matter what you are going through, no matter what kind of storm you find yourself in these days right now, or even as you look in the past at a storm that you went through and you're not even sure how you survived, to know that in those moments, God is not checked out. He's not disengaged, that he's with you. And that's the power of Jesus, that even in the middle of a storm, even as it rages, Peace can be present because of who Jesus is. I love this story so much. There's so much that we can find in this simple narrative. Today, as we uh, close our teaching time, I, I want to close uh, with the story from my uh, favorite kids' Bible called the Jesus Storybook Bible. Uh, through a kid's story. So kids, I want to invite you to come up on the stage. Have a seat right here. I'm going to grab a chair. Kids, come on up. Come on up. Come on up, guys. Come on up. All right, I'm going to have you scoot this way a little bit. I'm going to put my chair right here. And I want to encourage all of us to listen together uh, one more time to this story as we hear the strength and comfort from Jesus. I'm glad you guys are all here today. Thanks for sitting so nicely in your seats. And thanks, yes, I don't, I don't know where Harper is. All right, I'm glad you guys are here. So I want to read you this story. Um, this is called The Captain of the Storm. And if you can't see my pictures, you can see them right up there, Okay. The sun was going down. The air was warm and still. Let's go across the lake, Jesus said to his friends. Jesus had been helping people all day, and now he was tired. So they left the crowds at the shore and set out in a small fishing boat. Jesus climbed onto the boat to take a nap. As soon as his head touched the pillow, he fell fast asleep. It was a beautiful evening. A gentle breeze rustled the sails, and the friends were chatting happily as they headed out in the middle of the lake. Everything was perfect, just right for a nice, quiet sail. They were only about halfway across when out of nowhere, whirling winds swept across the lake, fierce and strong like a hurricane. A blinding flash of lightning lit up the sky. Thunder roared right overhead. The storm blew the water into towering waves and hurled the little boat up and up and then sent it hurling, crashing back down, down, down. The fishing boat was blown and buffeted and tossed and turned back and forth and up and down and left and right and round and round. And in the middle of the storm, Jesus was sleeping. Now Jesus' friends had been fishermen all their lives, but in all their years fishing on this lake, they had never once seen a storm like this one. No matter how hard they struggled with their ropes and their sails, they couldn't control their boat. The storm was too big for them. But the storm wasn't too big for Jesus. Help, they screamed. Wake up, quick, Jesus. Jesus opened his eyes. 
Rescue us, save us, they shrieked. Don't you care? Of course Jesus cared. And this was the very reason that he had come, to rescue them and to save them. Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm. Hush, he said. That's all. And then the strangest thing happened. The wind and the waves recognized Jesus' voice. They heard it before, of course. It was the same voice that had made them in the very beginning. They listened to Jesus, and they did what he said. Immediately, the wind stopped. The water calmed down. It glittered innocently in the moonlight and lapped quietly against the side of the boat as if nothing had happened. The little boat bobbed gently up and down. There was a deep stillness and a great quiet all around. Then Jesus turned to his wind-torn friends. Why were you scared, he asked. Did you forget who I am? Did you believe your fears instead of me? Jesus' friends were quiet, as quiet as the wind and the waves. And into their hearts came a different kind of storm. What kind of man is this? They asked themselves anxiously. Even the winds and the waves obey him. They said because they didn't understand. They didn't realize yet that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus' friends had been so afraid they had only seen the big waves. They had forgotten that if Jesus was with them, then they had nothing to be afraid of. No matter how small their boat or how big the storm. I don't know why there's no moon in that picture. That's a good question. I'm really glad that you guys joined me for this story. And I want you to know I'm proud of you and I'm praying for you. And I want you to know this Jesus who calms the storms. Kids, I want to invite you to go and sit down with your families. And when you get back there, we're going to say a prayer together. So head on back. Head on back to your seats. And as they walk back to their seats together... Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, let's listen again to the last words of this story. They're so well written. Jesus' friends had been so afraid, they had only seen the big waves. They had forgotten that if Jesus was with them, then they had nothing to be afraid of, no matter how small their boat or how big the storm. Will you stand and pray with me? Oh, our gracious God, we're so grateful for this good word today. Lord, for this reminder that you are the God who draws near and shows up to be with us right in the middle of the storm. And God, I pray for my friends in this room today. And Lord, I pray for those who find themselves in the midst of a storm themselves. God, I pray that you would do what only you can do, that you would be their peace that you would remind them of your nearness, that you would draw them close and encourage them this day. God, the truth is we are people who need hope, who need to be reminded that we can count on you no matter what, that you don't disengage, but that you are near and that we can trust you. And so God, as hard as it is this day, we, we confess before you, we trust you no matter what we're facing. God, we trust you. And God, we pause in these moments as a church family, and again, we ask your blessing upon our kids today. God, we thank you for their faith. We thank you for what you're doing in their hearts. And God, we pray that you would be the Jesus who calms the storm in their lives as well, and that they would know you through and through. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for our church family. We thank you for the way that you love us. It's in the name of Jesus, our Savior, that we pray. Amen.